It is repetition which makes for perfection. We're going to start with the Joker. Now, normally I would just do a head, but let's start with the spine. Like, kind of like a backwards S. And uh, that might not be the spine of the character, but this is kind of the general gist, the gesture of the Joker, is he's not a guy that's going to necessarily stand up straight. The head is here. So like a little um, egg-shaped thing, that will be the head. And uh, about um, near the top of the page, because we're going to fill it out here. And I'm thinking he's got a pose like <laughs> like this. <laughs> um, so we're going to see the socket of this shoulder right there. And I like to draw like the torso like this. And that, and that looks a little wide for the torso of the Joker, but I can revise it later. The other socket is hidden from our views on the other side of that torso. Here's the bottom of the rib cage, or one of the ribs, and the back of the rib cage looks like that. So from the side, this, this torso thing would look like this, or a three-quarter, maybe more of a three-quarter. This black part here being this part here. Um, connect the neck up into this slot right there. Now um, I'm going to have him have his pelvis kind of thrust out slightly. So if you draw the midpoint of the head and the torso down, they're kind of in the same line. I'm going to move the the, uh, the torso is going uh, the pelvis. Sorry, it's going to be a little forward of that. So. Just draw a kind of pair of tidy whities This is kind of mirrors the pel um, the pelvic bone structure, but you can sort of see where the uh, center of mass is is more forward. All right, so now we're going to kind of connect the torso into the uh, hips, and we're going to use kind of these concave li lines like this. With Batman, I probably would have done straight up and down lines, but the Joker is just a little, like, more exaggerated. From these slots, same thing, that shoulder slot there, the leg slot goes back there. So we can throw one leg, or thigh, straight down. And it ends in a ball there, which represents the knee. The other one's thrown out like this, roughly the same length, also ends in a knee. Right, so that is roughly what a thirty degree angle. That's ninety, and that's forty five. That's probably yeah, that's like thirty, maybe thirty two degrees. Sometimes when you construct a figure like this, it can look a little stilted or stiff because you're doing it piece by piece rather than looking at the sum totality of it. So let me think about in my head what that pose is going to be. It's like ta da. Um, but a lot of times I will start doing combinations. Let me see how this... I should do some sort of weird heart thing. How does that look? Uh, okay. I know I, I like this arm, right? So this shoulder, you gotta draw through there. What does this look like? It looks like a V, like a, like a, boomerang shape here with like a round ball which represents the fist. He's going to be holding a gun which goes over here. It's the Joker so we can kind of diffuse the the imagery here. We're making a joke. Oh and that flag, uh, this banner is like a flag so basically the way I do it usually is like a backwards S. Another backwards S that's in parallel like that. It's 
same kind of structure I used for um, locks of hair. Not Tony Stark, correct, I'll do it again. Here's the backwards S1, here's another backwards S2, they kind of meet right here, that's fine. I think I'm gonna go here and um, So it's the bunny ears with like a rectangle, a square next to it, which represents these two fingers. Oops, sorry. That's awesome. I'm like, how many other? I, I know people have streamed from church. All right, so with this, from the uh, palm, we're gonna do kind of like this jug, or is it a vase? Forearms are kind of like a vase here. Right, where you put a flower. But what I do with this, uh, let's say it's a glass vase, is I usually heat it on one side so that it kind of bends. So think about, oh, this is like an eggplant. It's like the eggplant emoji. Think of the eggplant emoji as a forearm. I see this a lot online. I just see forearms. I don't know what, it's like, yes, anyway. So once you've drawn like the forearm here, um, go ahead and uh, put the uh, the bicep. The bicep is kind of like a football shape here. Again, it's also an eye shape, but I don't like, the body doesn't really like symmetry. There's not a lot of purely symmetrical parts of the human body. In fact, I would say, Nothing really is purely symmetrical. So I would take that, think of it as a bicep, and then I would heat like one half so it rises. Um, and so that's kind of the shape of my eyes, not my eyes, but the way I draw eyes, right? Like that, but it's also a good shape for a bicep. What happens when you draw everything symmetrical? It looks kind of artificial and mechanical. So here's the ball for the shoulders, the melted bicep, eggplant, ham hock. Ham hock's more of the thigh. Now I'm going to finish off the spine. Before, if you remember, there was that kind of backwards S shape, which was the spine. I think that is the spine. This is going to be the edge of the lats over here on this side here. So we go from the bottom of that, that spherical shoulder and we pop it down like this. And then here's his, uh, his, his booty. I don't know what else to call it. Apologize to all my younger followers. Now we'll go back to the knees. And from the knees, we are gonna take these uh, eggplants and we're gonna basically upend them and lengthen them. So it's sort of the same thing. There's one and there's two. So now we're just basically lightening this all up so I can draw over the blueprint I have created. Let's do this again, all right? Chest, center of gravity chest or center of mass. Head, center of mass right there, okay? Pelvis over here. I'm gonna exaggerate it even more and I'm gonna push it out even more. Right. So what happens when you do this, if you do it correctly, guys, that first leg will go straight down. This other one will go back. This I've now got it in a almost 40 degree angle. Got it? And then if you draw a center line from the bottom of his groin up through his belly button, through the middle of his pecs to the clavicle here, that's the line. It should look like that, not like this. From this center line, like that belly button to the back of the back here, see how that line is so much longer than this line? This arc, if this is A is A, B, C. If segment A, B is shorter than B, C, then A to C is not bisected by point B, correct? Yes, okay. So you're gonna see the booty on the side here. Um, and you're gonna see this line where this thigh hits and see how we create dimensional space. This is an arc like this and this is more of a straight line. And 
by putting an arc, you're basically implying that the circle, that joint is circular like this, and this one is much more recessed into perspective. So at the end of the day, the chest, um, think about this way. If there was body armor on his chest, like that would be one pec, and this other pec like that. And from this bottom part, you can probably draw a line like that. The rib cage is kind of our three notches off those lines. All right, so from this clavicle, we draw a, a V shape, it's slightly offset. Think of the Verizon symbol, or check mark like that at the three quarter. Right, it's gonna be longer. Everything's gonna be longer on this side because the body is turned in space like this. So we're gonna see this side of the of the body, and look how like that panel. Look how small it is over there. There's that center part right here. These two sort of shapes right there. The abs. Okay. Shoulder. Weird melted bicep. Eggplant, hand is a pentagon, one finger comes out of the top of the pentagon, off to the side, two, pe two fingers down, thumb sticks out, it's a bit of like a, a small eggplant shape there with two connectors back to the, to the pentagon, round shoulder, melted bicep, Another emoji, eggplant, that's the tricep, forearm, eggplant, pentagon on the side, finger here, rest of the fingers there, thumb over here, it's holding the gun. Right, one, two, three, four fingers, confirmed, bottom of the gun. How it all fits together. There's the neck, think of a, like a priest collar, and then here's the egg shape, slightly forward. The ear is off to the side, almost touches the thumb. We don't want it to touch the thumb because that would be a very bad tangent. So let's move the thumb up a little bit. There's the ear. From that top of the ear, we're going to create a band, sort of like a ring around Saturn. And then there's going to be a smaller ring that exists parallel to that top ring below. If you took the center of those two rings and drew a straight line, it would look like this. That would be the axis. In this outer ring, about if this is the center axis, about halfway between here and here is the midpoint. That's going to represent the center of the, of the head. So from the top of the head, if you draw a straight line, like or an arc, sorry, that's the center brow. So off this, you have a V, just like this check mark here. The eyes are going to be balls underneath circular shapes on the Joker. The nose is going to jut off like this, like a 30, 60, 90 degrees triangle off that center line. The mouth is going to be here. And since he's the Joker, it's going to be kind of boomerang shaped. If you notice, there's something consistent. At this three-quarter mark, everything that's a V is actually skewed like that. So the mouth is skewed like this. It's like a Nike swoosh. The chin comes down here. The chin is also shaped like this. Normally from the front, it would be like that, right? Symmetrical. It's more like that because we're looking at it from a three quarter. If you go up to the center of the forehead, boom, sprout some hair. If it's a mohawk, it would look like this. A little too much, right? Let's tone it down. And then from the top of the ear, you come in on the uh, temple. Comes in and he's got a little bit of a receding hairline, so it goes like that. Kind of like a Roman helmet. Now we're gonna do the cake. It's gonna be about mid-thigh that we're gonna do a slight upshot we're gonna draw through the legs comes down like that 
this line is going to parallel this line, and then it's going to pop open like that, right? All right, so then um, let's go back to this backwards S, one, two, a little concave line there. So we're going to put a tie, and a tie is essentially a long triangular element like that. From the edges of the neck where it meets the clavicle, we'll draw a V, but again, it's in perspective. So I should create this weird W effect here, All right? V, W. Here's where his uh, sleeves end. Since he's jumping up out of this thing, let's go ahead and put his coattails like they're coming out like this. Let's add a little bit of uh, cake decoration. All right, and we're ready to roll. Let's get a marker. And we should start with the head. So we're gonna start with the eyebrows. Really exaggerate them out like this. Sort of like a sum symbol or an S, right? There's the S. And then I draw his eye, a circular eye. Uh, the nose is gonna cover up, so I do the outer part of the eye. Here's the nose. A shadow of the nose underneath. The upper part of the lip. So that part that's away from us is really short. This part is super long. It goes up, curves up. Implants in the side of the, uh, the cheek. Sort of draw a U, wide U there. Mirror that upward trend. Come back down, it's kind of like a fish, a whale. Can you see this whale? Can you see the whale? The whale has a smile. Just draw like some dots in the middle of the whale that represents the gap between the teeth. Drop a couple lines down. Lower lip has a shine in the middle, so I keep it open. The chin pops out. If you notice, I, I just bend it in just slightly like that. Just makes it feel a little bit more organic. A couple lines down like this that represents the, the creases in the eye and the face wrinkles on the side, a little bit of dark shadow, because he can't sleep well at night. That represents right here, the dark shadows there. The other cheekbone pops out like this. If you notice, I didn't even draw the top part of the nose. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can kind of draw the top there, maybe the tip right there. And I don't even have to draw the rest in there. The mind kind of fills it in. The brow sticks out. the eyes. We're going to render a little bit here to make it even more pronounced. Nostril line there. When you lift up the eyebrow, it creates creases and wrinkles in the forehead. And I draw like the shadow of the teeth at the bottom. <laughs> There's a lot going on in this very small little head here. Now here comes the hair. I'm not gonna go as large as I did in the outline, but it's exaggerated to kind of show uh, kind of the overall intent, the shape. The ear goes right here. Head's gonna throw a shadow over the neck. He's a wiry guy, so I imagine you see all the ligaments and tendons in the neck. It's narrow. Here's his tie that we showed. And the collar. We drew these V lines over here. They're gonna come in handy for the collar. <laughs> or the vest, excuse me. So that line goes down here, 
this line goes down here, that re represents the lapel. But that, that vest is right here. Button one, two, three, bottom of the vest, also a, a W shape, right? You just have to be able to draw W's and V's in perspective. You draw W's and V's in perspective. I'm like looking at the microphone like it's a camera. Draw W's and V's in perspective and like you're halfway done. some eye, eyelashes here. Alright. <clears throat> now, when you get to the shoulder, the clothes go over it. So, form that kind of undulation. Goes down and back up. Okay, from this point where it goes up, go ahead and draw the slot where the arm is. And I, I, I will do both at the same time because they are spatially related to one another. Right, if you see these are very par parallel lines. We don't see as much of this side of the uh, chest, so it goes like that. Here's the top part of the melted bicep. It goes into the socket here. The folds and wrinkles come out of this area here. The bottom part of the arm goes here. From the opening of the sleeve, come down here. Again, folds there. One, two buttons there. Okay. Same thing over here. Here's the rest of the shoulder. <clears throat> the bicep wrinkles here. Melted bicep wrinkles there. It's kind of a M shape here, M1, or N1. Elbow here, which represents the bottom of that eggplant, back up to that ring. Right, all right. And then I draw a circle, which represents the edge of the glove. Draw that little eggplant that represents the thumb, this part of the thumb here. And I draw a shadow underneath that thumb, like right there. And that's what this shadow is right there. Got one, two. That little line represents a sh uh, shadow of the palm right there. And there is this line here, which represents that palm there so and it's a glove so you can put a little couple of wrinkles in a shadow that represents this part this part here this part this part they're all just sneaky tricks I'm it's like I'm not thinking of drawing the actual finger I'm just drawing thinking of drawing like hey if I put a black shape here the mind will think that I have created a three-dimensional space so those two black, if you think about it, there are two black dots on a, on, a, on a white field with two black lines that shoot out. But when you look at it as a totality, you see bent fingers. Same thing from here, a couple wrinkles shoot out. Wrinkles always, uh, folds come out of where joints move, right? So if you think about, if you even have gloves, every time you bend, the, the, the wrinkles are going to come out of the bent creases. So when it they come from this point here, this point here, this point here, this point here. All right. Now we're going to uh, put the crotch here. Again, the same reason all the folds come out of this area. The folds come out of here. N1, backwards N1. That's the hip bone right there. There's one. There's the other hip bone right here. He's going to have a cummerbund, although cummerbund and a vest. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but... No one's going to know. Okay. Come down here. 
from the crotch. Here's that 32 degree angle, straight down the boote. Tail coat. Now, the cake uh, hides the legs, so we can just basically go ahead and I'm gonna make it more of like a real cake rather than a paper cake, so the edges are kind of uh, more like styrofoam kind of popping. It's a series of like arcs, which represents the dough. When things are thrown, things that are thrown first accelerate faster when they fall, so they're further apart. So one, two, boom. But not always, because if it's too consistently the same, it throws off this whole notion that it's all uh, random. It's like random, but with a, uh, you want to put some behind too to create that sense of three dimensionality. Oops, looks like something's coming out of his boote. But there's going to be basically more down here until and fewer pieces out here. And then uh, the top part of the frosting of the cake is kind of an irregular line. Using the structure that I put down there, come down here. There's a notch, another notch that's going to come in importantly here. Uh, I'm going to put a weird symbol. Okay, it's wavy because it's, um, it's icing. Here's the bottom layer. See how I kind of left that open because I knew the icing would be there, although I don't know if that even works. Notch, notch. Okay. Uh, here's the edge of the glove, a very similar sort of arc that mirrors the inside of that sleeve. The thumb hangs down over there, so I usually draw the thumb first. The trigger finger is there. And then the other fingers cascade down, right? It's like buses lined up in a row, or the same thing in perspective, it's getting smaller going back. So one, two, three, bottom of the gun, palm. That's all you need to do. And then we'll make this a 1911 handgun, 45 caliber. They all look the same. This is the slide. These lines here uh, allow the hand to grip the slide and pull it back. Here's the hammer. Safety. magazine. I gotta draw the stick that's coming out of the pistol. I need this to be straight, so I'm gonna find a straight edge. If I can find a straight edge. Oh, here we go. There's a straight edge right here. Here's the uh, angle of the gun. The stick's gonna come out of the top hole. There we go. If you're wondering how can that stick be longer than the gun itself, it's because it's collapsing. So I'm going to make this one a little bit wider here. There we go. Because there's always that person in the crowd like, how is that possible? Those claws can't come out of that forearm. It's too long. They're too long. All right.
lettering, you're gonna have to figure out yourself how to do that in perspective. I can barely do it myself, honestly. I'll fake it a little bit here. Sidhuism. I know that I know there are people like that. Trust me, I've been around the block. I'm going to uh, push the shadows to make it feel more three-dimensional. First, I'm gonna make the, the gun black, and that means uh, leave a little bit of a rim, sort of a highlight at the top. This ink brush thing is a little thick, but uh, I'll work with it very lightly, kind of hit. going to put a dark shadow at the bottom and it creeps up on those folds and I'm going to soften that edge by doing little dits and I'm going to do a shadow on this part of the jacket bring it down into the bottom part and then up with these folds on the other side of this jacket, but leave the buttons white. And it's a lot more, because we're seeing the flattest part of this uh, eggplant, it's wider over here. Buy an eggplant, turn it around in the light, you'll see what I'm talking about. Palm has a shadow underneath here. The glove casts a shadow on the wrist underneath here. The back part of the head has a shadow. Let's put a little bit of black into the hair. Okay. Shadow underneath the chin. Let's make the tie black with a couple like little, maybe one little highlight like that. The back side of this, uh, his jacket, maybe leave the top part a little white to kind of show that the material has thickness to it. It's not paper thin. Turn the paper because I have a favorite stroke. It's easiest to kind of control the pen at certain angles. So it's easiest to accommodate my hand rather than trying to um, master every stroke. Now over here, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple shadows over here. I forgot to put a um, flower thing. So I'm gonna draw it here. And then I'm gonna um, fix it in post with white out. Black shadow here, a couple dots. Same thing that I did on the forearms, I'm kind of doing on the legs. And then if I can get, if I hit this, the tip of this marker very fast, just the slight tip, barely touch it, you get thinner lines. Very tricky. Same thing. Oh, that would have been bad. I definitely left a mark. And then we're going to add uh, 
a shadow of the icing. I smeared the ink here a little bit. And then I'm gonna just do it on the underside the, the bat symbol here rather than all of it to kind of make this feel more pronounced. As we near the two hour mark, I just wanna thank our mods, if you guys can help me out. Kirihiko, Crispy Egg Roll, Poop Kid. These guys work tirelessly behind the scenes to bring you the finest stream available. Let's go ahead and make it darker there. So now I'm gonna go back in and lightly erase what I have, hopefully without smearing anything. And I lightly erase it because what happens is the pencil lead has um, filled in some of the line work that, so to the eye, it looks like the line is um, complete, but when you erase it, you start seeing the gaps where the pencil lead was kind of doing the work of the ink. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in with a 0.4 marker and just clean up and tighten up some of these lines. But anyway, what we're gonna do at the end of the stream in like another five minutes or 10 minutes, we're gonna go find another creative and just kind of say hello and, and uh, hopefully kind of introduce them to a wider audience. There are not a lot of creative, big name creative streamers. I think the biggest name is, as far as I've seen is um, Bob Ross and Bob Ross is no longer with us, hasn't been with us for a long time. So um, I do like the idea of kind of sharing the love of art and producing creative work. So you can see I'm just kind of taking some of these dits and dats of shadows I put in and making them into something by extending the lines, tapering the lines a little bit, pulling them out, disguising the fact that they're blobs of ink. All right. Um, sometimes it just means putting little dits like uh, rendering like this. Here and there. Maybe extending some of these lines. And then taking this cummerbund and kind of rendering to the side to make it a slightly different texture. Almost like it's, I don't know. I don't know what material. Something else, wool, something scratchier. And if you notice, you put, if you put slight shadows under lines like I have, you have to kind of go throughout the whole thing and apply it evenly to make it look uh, correct. If you only apply it here and there, it looks odd, so you have to be consistent in how you approach it. I think I'm done, except for the whiteout part. Again, pulling out dark areas into light. Um, now clean up the area that I smudged. This flow on this one. Oh, there we go. Finally, it takes a, sometimes it gets a little dried up. I'm gonna fix the flower that I had here. And um, a 
elongate the chin a little bit. Fix the uh, gun. I think I, the lines were not as parallel as I would like them to be. So I put white out, knowing I can go back in with black line to fix that. Clean up some of the edges here that got a little beat up when I was kind of moving quickly. And uh, put a couple lines like this. Just kind of inspired a little bit to kind of create that sense of explosion. And then go back in with a marker and continue that. not dry. I can work around the edges. Just stay away from the, the big globular areas here. So there's that. Just cleaning up the edges and just beautifying it a little bit. These hairlines just thin them out a little bit. The one disadvantage to the whiteout marker is that it's kind of a set thickness, and uh, so to get a thinner line, you have to put the thick line down, and then go back with ink, black ink, and draw around it like I am going, like right here. a little bit. Again, clean up some of these areas here. And I noticed I kind of screwed up over here. The line kind of went over a little too much. And I think I think I have it. I want to thank all of you guys for drawing along. We did something a little ambitious today in doing a full figure. I'm going to I look forward to actually logging into Discord and seeing what you guys have produced. One other thing I'm going to add. Little texture lines, like this is also open. It's just kind of indicate there's some substance here. It's not open like it is there. Okay. You can go on and on with like these little dits and dats. Every little and, and honestly, um, when I spend like six to eight hours on a cover, it is literally going in and adding these little small details here and there that um, I don't know if people even notice, but the sum total of it makes a difference, I think. Kind of your enjoyment of it. All right, so here we are. That is the final finished product at the right, correct angle to the camera, I believe. Thank you, guys. <laughs>